we're going to be making some roast beef out on the Weber kettle tomorrow. So today, that means prepping the roast and seasoning it. And what are we going to use for our roast beef? Well, one of the cuts I like to use because I'm going to be slicing it thin is eye of round. Now I've got a USDA choice eye of round here, about eight pounds and need to clean this up. I want to get a lot of this fat off of here. You can see we got a really big fat cap over here and that's just not going to be great in sliced roast beef. You can see just how thick that fat is right there. I'm going to try and get as much of the membranes off as I can also. You find it kind of spread around here. I'm not going to worry about little tiny bits that get left unless they are a very tough piece of membrane. You can usually tell those. These thinner parts like this, this kind of silver skinny that is just really translucent. I don't find that those are a huge deal. If I can get them off, I will. Some of that membrane is a little thicker and you'll, you'll know it when you touch it. All right, I'm happy with that. Let's get it seasoned up. Now the rub I'm gonna be using today is Wishing Well Barbecue's Texas Cowboy Rub. First though, I do see some dry surfaces on here, so I wanna go ahead and add a binder and I'm gonna use a balsamic glaze from Trader Joe's. And this goes really well with beef, so if you get some of that flavor coming through as a binder, that's just a bonus. We're getting a nice coating on here. I really like this rub from Wishing Well Barbecue. And I know a lot of the time you see me season things the day before and leave it overnight. Yes, and I'm doing that here as I mentioned, and this is a really good time to do that for roast beef to really let this seasoning soak in overnight. I wanna be really generous with this seasoning. I wanna get a rack under this here. And now this is going in the refrigerator and I will see you tomorrow out at the Weber Kettle. All right, the Weber kettle is coming up to temp. My target today is 250 degrees. I'm using the Mallory firewall to create two zones today, a smaller direct zone, which we're not gonna use. And I have some foil in the bottom of the cook chamber just to sort of help direct the air to the coals and also catch drips. Also using the Mallory cast iron grate on top. Now, eye of round is a very lean cut, so we're probably not gonna have a super long cook today. There's not a lot of fat to sort of render in here. And we're only gonna take this to 125 degrees internally. Then we're gonna wrap it tight in foil and it's gonna cool down at room temperature for half an hour. Then it's gonna go in the refrigerator for three to four hours to really chill down before we slice it for some roast beef sandwiches. So let's go ahead and get our eye of round on. I'm gonna get my temperature probe in here dead center. So I've got the short probe today, which is good. I can get it straight in there. Right about there should be good. Let's get our white oak on here. Let's go ahead and get this closed up and we'll probably come back and check in about an hour. All right, we are one hour into this cook. Our internal temp is about 82 degrees right now. Temp of the kettle's been holding pretty steady right around that 250. And this is that time in a cook about an hour in when all the aromas come together. The wood, the meat, it is just smelling great here right now. So we'll go ahead and take a quick look at our eye of round roast. We might give it a spritz. I don't have any water in there because I really want the outside to be a little bit more, I don't know if crusty is the right word for a nice sliced roast beef, but if it's too dry, we can give it a little spritz. That is looking fantastic. Do you want to give it a light spritz here though? Just a little light spritz here. Get our lid back on. And I'll bring you back when we hit that 125 internal. 
All right, we're about to hit 125 internal. Time to get our roast off, get it in some foil, wrap it tightly. And while it's just sitting there in that foil for about a half an hour, it's gonna rise up to 130, 135 finish temp. That carryover heat is gonna continue cooking it. So let's see how our roast did. Oh yeah, that looks beautiful. Get my probe out of here. We're gonna double wrap this. I'm gonna make sure that's nice and tight. This is gonna go inside, sit on the counter for probably 30 minutes to an hour. Then I'm gonna transfer it to the refrigerator. It's gonna chill there for three to four hours. And then we're gonna slice it and have some fantastic smoked roast beef sandwiches. Well, it's not four hours later. Actually, when I checked it at four hours, it just still wasn't firm enough. And you really want it to be kind of firm when you're gonna slice it. So I left it overnight. And that's really a good approach to take if you're trying to firm it up for roast beef. So let's go ahead and get a slice in the center here just to see, and then I'm gonna break out the meat slicer. Yeah, there we go. That's what I wanted, just that slight pink. This is gonna be terrific. So let's go ahead and slice it up. All right, so I have my slicer here, a piece of parchment paper to catch our slices. And I'm just gonna start on a very sort of moderate setting first. I wanna just get one slice. It's not necessarily gonna be the thinnest. Get a hunk of our roast beef in here. Actually, I'm liking the thickness of that. I think we're just gonna stick with that. Should we take a taste? All right, I think we've got enough for a good sandwich. All right, I've got a nice bun here that I've toasted lightly. We're gonna start building this sort of a classic roast beef sandwich. I'm not going over the top on a bunch of stuff. We're gonna start with some lettuce on the bottom here. Give us a nice bed for our roast beef. And we're just gonna kind of start piling this high. We spent the time making it, slicing it. Now we're gonna build this. So we're gonna put plenty on here to enjoy it. We're gonna fold some of these upper stacks here. That look good, is that enough or do I need more? Couple thinly sliced tomatoes here and some horseradish because roast beef, I like horseradish. You don't have to put it on, but I really like it. I love that kick it gives you. Some people like just straight mayo on this. I like horseradish. And we're gonna top it. And there we go, some really nice deli style smoked roast beef from the Weber kettle, piled high with a few extra things on here. Let's dive in. I am gonna savor this bite. You can definitely go buy roast beef. Pretty expensive when you get quality roast beef, but making it like this, this is killer. Some of this I'm gonna slice and freeze and vacuum seal and use over the next few months. It's one of the things I love about making my own roast beef. I get to control the flavors. I get to control how I use it and how long I use it. It's just a fantastic use of a cut that not a lot of people use for a lot of things. I have round, perfect for roast beef. 